You know, friends, family, you know, anybody that was an acquaintance to Mr. Chuma, you know, everybody knows him as Coach Chuma, but uh, you know, it's a long time coming if you think about what John has done uh, in the borough of Frackville, the community. You know, and I did talk to John before the meeting, before this uh, event a little bit, and uh, the word got out, you know, jokingly, he was a little bit upset about it, you know, and again, when you give a lifetime achievement, people are wondering, you know, why are they doing it now? You know, John's like, why now? You know, what does everybody think I'm, you know, I'm dying, right? <laughs> well, how many years is it? Like, how many, what's a good round number for John? Is it 60, 70 years? You know, is it, is it 80 years? Like, how much does he have to give back for all of these people to get together and recognize his, you know, all of his accomplishments? Well, I thought 50 years is a nice round number, right, John? 50 years, right? So. This is why we're all here today, you know, enjoy the day. Do have some speakers that we will get up here and talk. And then if there is anybody else that wants to come up, and this ain't a John Schumer roast, okay? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to turn it into that. But if you have anything you want to say, by God, you have the mic, you can come up here, you know, give your, give everything you want to John as far as, you know, your thank yous and your, your uh, you know, love to him. You, you're welcome to do so. But right now we have some people on the list there uh, that we'll bring up here. And uh, the first one is Jim Gross, the North Schuylkill's athletic director. Hold on. He asked why he was the leadoff hitter because he never hit homers. I thought I'd be at the bottom of the list to, uh, to talk about Mr. Chuba. But, um, Glad to be here. I'm, I'm here on behalf of North Schuylkill School District, uh, our baseball coaches that, that coaches has been with, and our players, both past and current, uh, to honor Coach Tuma. And, and I have to admit, when Wendy initially reached out to me and asked if I would speak today, I thought about it for a little bit. I, I was going to say, no, what am I going to say? that could honor a man like, like John Chuma to do him justice. It, it certainly wouldn't have been a no to, uh, because I wouldn't want to do it. It was just because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to find the words to honor such a man. But a man like John Chuma's body of work and his life speaks for itself. It doesn't need me to come up and try to put it into words. And, and judging by how many of his friends and family are here today uh, to support and celebrate him, uh, what I thought would be a hard speech turned into a really easy one because I only needed to say two words, and that's thank you to John Chuma for everything he's done, serving his country, being a family man, serving his community, and everything he's done for Frackville Teener Baseball, and also the reason why I'm here, North Google Baseball. We thank you, we appreciate you, and we love you. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, next on the list would be Newt Brayford, uh, fellow coach and uh, family friend. First of all, I want to thank everybody for having me up here to, to speak about John. Um, the last three years, my son's been old enough to play in Teener League, uh, and it's been the best three years of coaching for me because of this man right here. Uh, I'm probably one of the few people that grew up in Frackville that, that, that did not have John as a coach. I, I successfully managed my years of Little League and Teeter League around his family schedule. When, he, when I went to Teeter League, he went to Little League. But that's not to say I didn't know John. Uh, one of the bones I have to pick with him today is as growing up in Frackville, and, and Jimmy might know this from our high school days, my parents always warned me that they had a network of people in Frackville that knew everything that happened. And I think I would get in trouble. And he probably was one of those, he was one of those guys that would report back to my parents and, and let them know what I was doing in town. Most of it was good, but he was one of the snitches on that. So that's, <laughs> I just can't allocate for that. But I, I can tell you that as a coach and as in being in education for 25 years, um, the best way I can describe John is not how he treats his players, but how his players treat him. And if you spent any time around this year's Teeter League team, we had a group of kids that were great kids that I don't I never showed any disrespect to, to Mr. Truma. Always treated him with respect and with the with 
the knowledge that he gave them, took it in, acted on it. And that's not because they were threatened or anything like that. It was because the way Mr. Chuma coaches and the way he acts around people. And on a personal level, I couldn't ask for a better person to coach my son this year than John. I know I, I reached out to John a few times when Aaron and I would butt heads or Aaron was doing something and then John took care of it. But thank you, John. Thank you from the break of family. Um, I wish my dad could be here. To, to, my mom and dad uh, could be here today to see this. But thank you from, the, from my family and thank you from this year's Teener League team. We really appreciate it. And next year, hopefully, we go a few games further, right? Thank you. All right, next on the list would be attorney Joe Nahas, one of John's closest friends and a parent of a former player. Hello, everyone. I was asked to uh, say a few kind words about not my friend, but truly a brother, John Schumer. So I was glad to do so. <laughs> I put a few, put a few together for us all here today. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, it's, it's, it's my honor to be here today. Um, when you look at John Schulman, when you look at a person, you look at someone and, and you want to judge an individual and say, you know, what kind of man are they? How do you judge success? How do you judge someone uh, that has left his or her mark on society and on individuals? Well, don't look any further than right here. And I'm going to explain to all of you why. Sure, John Schuma has won many championships. Many. And if he did win the championship game, guess what? He was in it. But why is that? There's a lot of coaches in this room to see you. But none of you possess, including myself, the amount of compassion that this man has. None of you. In fact, if coaches possessed my pinky nails amount of compassion that John Schumer possesses, your success would be immeasurable. And that is huge. Why is that? Well, when we judge success, a lot of people look at cars. They look at homes. They look at something that John and I talk about, Masai, Lebanese for money, right? There's a, a meme out there that shows two holes, both of them six feet in nature. It shows the billionaire's gravesite and it shows the pauper. They're the same. Success is measured, I feel, one of two ways. One, look at this room. Look at his family. His son Johnny, his daughter Angela, his son Chris. Will you ever meet more beautiful, loving human beings than those three individuals? You won't. Why is that? Why is that? Well, the apple, of course, didn't fall forward. The apple never fell. Because John's compassion holds that apple onto that tree. Look at his grandchildren. Look at everyone here. Look at this room. There's an awful lot of love in this room. And I mean, if I, if someone were speaking on my behalf, they wouldn't have a sheet like that. It would be an index card, and it might be a quarter bill. I don't possess what he possesses. I wish I did. My children do. Why is that? Because my children have been around him since a very, very, very young age. John has been with my oldest son since probably he's been six and is a major factor as to why he is as successful as he is at baseball and also a major factor as to why he is so kind-hearted. Mr. Braford hit on this a little bit, and I'm going to expand on it. John Shula was the mediator for my family. What does that mean? Well, in fact, I don't even know how he does it. Who in the hell would want to be around teenagers for as many years as he's been around them? <laughs> teenagers suck, all right? They're terrible. When they're young, they love you. You can't do anything wrong. They think that you're the greatest thing in the world. All of a sudden, they're 13 or 14, and they don't listen to you at all. You know, not at all. They don't care, it doesn't matter. So who did I have? Who was in my corner and who helped me with my children? John Schumann, John Schumann. 
When my son was 14 years old in January, I decided I was going to change his pitching form. I was going to change the mechanics and change the physics around it. My son, very respectful, but I could tell he hated it. What does John Truman say? Hey, Joe, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. And he still incorporates that to this day. Wouldn't have probably went over if it wasn't for John Truman. It wasn't. When my son, and not a lot of people know this, my son was selected on the Big 26 Pennsylvania team. Do you want to know why? One of the main reasons, John Schumann. When my son was a sophomore in high school, he did not pitch one varsity game, not one. And what had occurred is, is when he tried out down in Lebanon Valley for the Big 26 team, did well. He then went to Penn State, main campus, did well. But the coach could not find any stats on Jojo Nehas. Zero. Zero stats. What did he do? He looks at the newspaper article, finds one in the Republican, John pitched my son, championship game against Pine Grove, Joe throws a no here. Again, did not pitch one pitch his sophomore year for towards who? Zero. It was because of John Chuma, according to the coach, and John didn't believe me when I called him that evening. The coach said to my son, it was because of your performance at tryouts, but I read an article on you, and it was from Fractal Teamers, and thank God, you know, the press was there and so forth, and thank God John always had the confidence in my son. He treated him like his son. John just didn't do that for my son, though. John coached children like they were his children. John saw things beyond the game. John knew that kids hurt when they weren't selected to maybe start and John would always say to me, my God, you know, I can see how upset these kids are. I can see how upset the parents are. And the parents would always go to John. Why would they go to John? Because they knew that John understood. Because John is like the Grinch when he found the Christmas spirit. Chuma's heart is 10 times the size of a normal human being's. And that's just a fact. If you will look at John Chuma, a gentleman who not only gave his service to Vietnam, but gave his health to Vietnam, comes back as a very young man, finds himself in a hospital battling cancer from sucking in tons of Agent Orange. I mean, what a tribute to society. What a pillar. I mean, I wish I was just this much like him. I'm not, but I wish I was. To look at his family and how beautiful they are and look at his friends, I mean, how many of us could fill a room like this? I certainly could not. Unless you were here maybe to stab me. I mean, <laughs> but to look at John, my God, what a tribute. What an absolute tribute. John, I say this, I, I love you. I do. My, my, my children love you. I love you. I think uh, as, uh, as when we're on this walk, we don't say that enough to people. We really don't. And I'm glad I have this opportunity. I want to thank you very much for, <clears throat> for giving me an opportunity. Right now, I'd like to introduce uh, someone who holds John in, in very high, high esteem. That would be my son, Joseph, he, uh, that young man from Fractal, John. Uh, he uh, was just promoted to AA baseball, and he really attributes a lot of his success to John. And if we could chop it up, I'd appreciate it. John, this is for you, baseball stories to let you all know what kind of mentor and really truly a, a, a fatherly figure John was to Joe. When Joe was a junior in high school, um, we were, he was playing for Marion and 
when you get into leagues, the newspaper, uh, I won't mention the reporter's name, but he's back there with short hair. He's a great <laughs> shirt. Uh, but, but for the purpose of this speech, I'm not going to mention Leroy's name. And what happens is Republican will print kind of like a little bio on each team, okay? And we'll tell you the highlights of those teams, okay? So it talked about Pottsville, talked about whatever other team it was, and it talked about another team in Marion. Can't remember the four teams. And Marion was playing North Schuylkill, and the newspaper printed Marion, the only team without a true ace pitcher. Okay? So my son saw that when he came home from school, he was upset, distraught. I was angry. I wanted to run down the Republican and choke somebody. And I called John. And I say to John, North Schuylkill wasn't in it that year, I say to John, I said, Jesus, I got a kid who's going on to pitch. The paper prints, you know, North School or Marion, the only team without a true ace. You know, and John gets all the Joe and says, Joe, look at this stuff. I say, listen, you got the baseball. You got the you perform and let your performance speak for itself. That year Pottsville had I think, and Brian was there with me, I think they had seven Division I athletes. One of them, young man by the name of Travis Bidemore. Might have heard of him, plays Major League Ball, he's now in, in AAA. Well, Travis led off that year. John was sitting behind him, we were sitting on a bank in Pine Grove, and Joe struck him out looking. Might have been the first time he struck out looking all year, and he was 0 for 3 against Joe that day. And the Republican, I don't think, had a bad comment to say about him there after, uh, and after that game. Another time I witnessed John Chuma with Joe Joe, which it must have been uncomfortable for him, was only once in my son's career did John Chuma face off against Joe Nails. And he coached him the entire time. That time was when John Chuma was coaching North Schuylkill, my son's senior year, and my son pitched against North School for Marion. And although it was difficult for him, as I watched my son, and I, I think when Joe came in, I think he struck out 10 or 11 in a row, and John was sitting there, and I watched him in the dugout. And you just saw that little sparkle, even though that he was coaching the other team, that little smile that, you know what? That was his product. That was a young man that he coached and he groomed since he was six years old. And although he was a coach for the other team, there was no claps, there was no cheers. You just saw that little twinkle in his eye that he was so proud of my son. And not a day goes by that he doesn't tell me that. And I just want to say in closing that, you know, the world would be a hell of a lot better of a place with more people like John Schumann in it. John, I love you. This is a great event, and you deserve it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joe. Uh, up next would be uh, some former ball players, uh, Jake Green, Jaden Leiby, and Mike Little. say uh, I, I could probably speak on all of us here um, thank you to coach Chuma you know for absolutely every single thing he's done for us uh, whether it was you know teen or league uh, high school ball even just life other sports uh, he was always like the kind of person you know you could go to about anything he's done so much for us he's moved mountains for us man um, and that's something we'll always be grateful for always thankful for and uh, you know there's even nights I remember in travel ball, we're 10 years old. We're, we're, uh, we're at this some barn in, in the middle of Cadence or something. And Coach Shum was there at like 8 o'clock at night showing us how to throw a drop ball. And uh, for that, like, I'll never forget those uh, those kind of moments. And that's that's something that uh, you know we'll take with us for the rest of our lives. And, um, secondly, I just want to say, you know, <clears throat> I'm super thankful just you know speaking in front of like um, everybody that you know your closest with your closest family, your closest friends. And, uh, you know, I just kind of reflect on the kind of person you are and uh, who we kind of, you know, try and model ourselves after. You know, because we're, we're really thankful. And there's one more person here that we, we couldn't get, unfortunately, uh, Reggie Crawford. But he did send us a video um, to show his gratitude. So much, Coach Shuma. Hope you're doing well. Um, I just want to get on here and say thank you. I would not be in the position that I'm in today if it wasn't for your help. Um, 
I know I speak for myself and I'm speaking for a lot of people there as well as many others. The impact you've had in so many people's lives is something that's truly special and something we all appreciate. But miss you, hope you're doing well. We'll see you in a few months, all right? Take care, enjoy this day. Thank you very much, Coach. We love you. Thank you, guys. Uh, next up is Ray Flannery, Brackville Midget Football. Hi, Coach Juma, Uncle John. <laughs> uh, we just want to, uh, to give you a gift for all your years, besides being at for all your baseball. You spent many years at up at Crackville football field as well. So we'd like to present you with a jersey and a nice little hat. <laughs> well, thanks for all the years you spent with me too, even though I was a Gerardville boy. <laughs> all right, thank you, Ray. Uh, up next would be Representative Joanne Stair. Love Johnny, I'll tell you what. You uh, certainly 50 years. Uh, I've known you for over 25 years. Uh, the years go back, our families go back, and uh, I just can't say thank you enough for everything. For the boys, my boys personally, from out in the Tri Valley area. So it really doesn't matter what neck of the woods you came from. Johnny was always there and was always a very good influence. Thanks for the memories, Johnny. Uh, there's a token of our appreciation. Representative Torsic and myself wanted to give you a certificate of recognition from the State House uh, just to say exactly that. Thanks for the memories and thank you for everything you've done for your community uh, and many more to come. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Up next is uh, Wendy Montgomery, family friend and former player of John Schuma. everybody for joining us to honor a very special man. Some of you may know me, for those that don't, my name is Wendy Montgomery and I've known John pretty much my entire life. His daughter Angela and I have been best friends since kindergarten. Once we got a little older, we began our athletic careers together, playing t-ball then eventually softball. She started pitching and I started catching, which meant we were together pretty much most of the time on and off the field. This is when my love and admiration for John Chuma began. My father passed away when I was 13 years old and not long after that, John took me under his wing. He made sure I attended every basketball camp, softball clinic, practice, game, and tournament. He, even in high school, he sat in the stands cheering us on and telling us what we did wrong. I attended Chuma family functions as well as family vacations. Most of the time, he probably didn't even know I was there. I didn't realize it back then, but I now know that he was not only teaching me the love for the game of softball, but for the love for the game of life. While he certainly didn't have to, John stepped up to the plate and always went to bat for me. I will be forever grateful for how you've treated me over the years. You mean more to me than you will ever know. A few years back, I was inducted into the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame, and it only seemed appropriate that I had John Schumer sitting in the crowd sharing that recognition with me. After all, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been there. In 2007, I, along with my business partner, took over John's security company. I had no idea what I was doing. He spent over 25 years building that business into a very successful one, and I did not want to disappoint him. When he, we finally moved out of his little basement office, as I'm sure he couldn't wait for us to get out of there, we finally got settled into a new location. He came into my office one day and handed me a plaque. I can't remember where he told me that he got it from, but he wanted me to have it, and it was written by an unknown author, and it was titled, Don't Quit. And it read, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tin of clouds of doubt, and you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things go wrong that you mustn't quit. 
when I'm having a bad day or when things weren't going as well as I thought, and there were plenty of times that I did want to give up and quit, I would look at that plaque and think of John Chuma and think of how many times he wanted to quit. And he could have quit, but he did not. We are now entering our 17th year in business, and I'm eternally grateful to John that I never quit. John, you are not only like a father to me, but you're also my mentor, one of my dearest friends, and my hero. To say you are a legend is an understatement. You have touched so many people's lives with your dedication, dedication to teaching us not only the fundamentals of the game, but the valuable life lessons. You deserve this honor. I can never give back to you what you have given to me, what you have given to us. Thank you for being the man that you are. You are truly one of a kind and the epitome of a good man. I love you. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Uh, before I get on to the mayor and also myself uh, representing the Frackville Borough, I'll talk amongst, you know, just myself as a friend of John Schumer. But before I go there, my son uh, texted in, you know, from my son and said that uh, he does uh, truly, uh, and sorry he could not make it today. Uh, he has a formal commitment with Lafayette football. Uh, which I'll just read what he said, and it kind of mimics what everybody here is talking about. John, not only a baseball coach, but some of his lessons. For as long as I can remember, during Little League to Teen League Baseball, Mr. Chuma's selfless servitude to all players is the most prominent. Teaching his love for the game to others is what he did best, and it shows from his distinguished list of accomplishments and accolades. But more importantly, was coaches off the field impacts in the community and everyday life lessons. He exemplified what it means to have character, lead, and give back. No one is more deserving of the recognition, Mr. Chuma. Thank you for being the standard for all. So I got, I got two stories for, uh, for uh, me as a person. One, I was an 11-year-old kid playing Little League Baseball. And uh, I talked to Mr. Chuma about this a lot. It chokes me up a little bit, but I was 11 years old. We were playing St. Clair uh, in Little League All-Stars. I was 11. I wasn't going to pitch at all that year. I, I thought I was the best pitcher in the league that year. So of course, I wanted to pitch every game. Uh, I was told by the coach earlier in the year, you won't be pitching. We had Scotty Hauser, he threw the ball like a pill. You know, Nicky Borzak and other, you know, other kids. Uh, and then there was this, this flaw in Little League Baseball. We were still playing Little League Baseball Championship at the same time we were doing District 24. And St. Clair Lily came up and actually watched me and Scotty Hauser play against each other. But they were fixated on Scotty because he threw the ball. He couldn't even see it. That's how hard he threw it. So they went to the District 24 Little League, walked in, said that Scotty Hauser is playing, you know, he's illegal, he can't pitch, and all this stuff. So they come to practice the next day, they tell me I'm going to pitch in this game. I'm like, holy cow. I pitched the same game Scotty Hauser did. Yeah, they didn't pick up on you, Ron. They picked up on him. They wanted to make sure he couldn't pitch. So there I was, 11 years old, unnoticed. I go down to St. Clair. Didn't have the greatest outing, but we ended up winning, I think, in seven innings. I pitched seven innings, played. But I can remember Coach Schuma right behind the backstop, prominently yelling to me, throw the hook, Ron. Throw the hook, Ron. That's all I heard the whole game, right? Throw the curveball, right? But we ended up winning. So that, that's my personal, as a kid, he, I, he never coached me on the field, but he was there with me all the time when I played. I'll talk to you as an adult. Not many people noticed, but during Little League in Frackville, it was kind of a little bit turmoil. We had a lot of great coaches. We had a great lot of kids, a lot of athletes, but we just couldn't seem to get on the same page as coaches to understand who can coach the great team, right? A lot of young kids that were very good in baseball, we just couldn't get together, couldn't figure it out. Our kids all moved to Teener League. If there was one person that was going to be able to gel everybody together, right, and put these kids on the field to win a championship, it was Coach John Chuma, right? That year, uh, I believe it was my son's second year in Teener League, believe it or not, we won the Teener League championship under John's toolages and his son, Chris actually coach and I also believe Mr. Chwanski are you in the house I believe Mr. Chwanski also coached that year so I think Joe Neos touched on it a little bit earlier that 
Why did anybody win those championships? Is because John found a way to put all the differences aside of all the parents, all of the kids, and everything like that, and just did the thing that he loved. And the one thing John loved was coaching baseball, right? Coaching kids. Now, what I couldn't believe is after we won the championships, I said to John, holy shit, how many team or three championships is this? You know, 10, 11, 12. He said, you ain't gonna believe it, but this is my first drawing, right? After all those years, right, John? But then after that, got in the groove. I think he won four out of five, something like that. But again, you can go back to everybody that talks about John Chuma. It's not just his coaching ability. It's him as a person. It's his family. It's how he's done things. And he's left a mark with my son. He left a mark with me as an adult also. So I would wish that everybody would please stand up and give John the round of applause that he deserves. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got any stories? All right, Mr. Hummel, yes. you're up. I'm not much of a speaker, but I'm here as a past commander of the post 398 here in Flacville, American Legion. I just want to thank John for all the hard work he put in with the boys who ran and played for the Flacville American Legion Post 398, which in 32 years he became and had them boys become champions. They won the championship in that year, 1999, and his son was on that team, and my son was on that team, Matt Hummel. I'd like to thank John for that very much dedication that he gave to those boys and to the American Legion, all the members of the American Legion Post 398. John, thank you very much. And myself, you as a veteran of Vietnam, and myself a Vietnam veteran, I thank that man for his service and his duty for what he did for his country. Thank you, John. Don't be shy, it's not that hard up here. It's not that bad. All right. So I, I got a message from one of our fellow classmates, Joe Connect. So he messaged me on Facebook. He said, hey, Wendy, hope all is well. I saw you posted the celebration for John Chum and I wanted to share a story. He probably won't remember me, but I'll never forget him because he was responsible for the only home run I ever hit in my life. In 1998, my senior year, he would come to our games and watch from behind home plate fence. I was at bat after fouling off a couple of pitches. I heard choke up a half an inch. I actually thought it was my friend John Bain and I ignored it. I fouled off another pitch and heard it again. I turned around and saw it was Chuma, so I obliged. Sure enough, I yanked the next pitch down the left field line and screamed, as explicit of, yeah, as I, <laughs> as I rounded first and saw the umpire twirling his finger for the home run signal. It remains one of my favorite memories and I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. Maybe the wind was blowing out that day, or maybe John Chuma is truly a special human being. I never got the opportunity to thank him for the advice, so please do me a favor and let him know that I'll be forever grateful for his base baseball wizardry. <laughs> All right, if there's uh, no other uh, comments from outside, uh, we'll go ahead with the presentation. First off, I'd like to thank Wendy, because Wendy did call me, and through Wendy, myself, and my partner in crime, Ron, uh, we made this event happen, so thank you very much. And then a special thank you to Tim Sullivan, because he was the person who created the plaque for us. So we do have this plaque, and we're going to hang it in honor somewhere within the borough, so that everybody will be able to see it. So I will read the plaque. This plaque is in honor of John Chuma, the fractal native born and raised, a Vietnam veteran and a 1967 graduate of Norris Google. John not only served the community being past council president, 
He was a member of the Frackle Jay-Z's, the Recreation Board, Lions Club, past president of Frackle Biddy Basketball, Frackle Midget Football, North Schuylkill Frackle Halftime Club, and North Schuylkill Baseball. Since 1973, he coached Little League Teeners softball, Biddy Basketball, as well as assisted in both North Schuylkill Spartans baseball and softball teams. He was a part of the Frackville Little League's first division 24 title and assisted in multiple championships in Teeners and Legion Ball baseball. In 2019, John was honored by having the Frackville Borough Teener baseball field named after him. For over five decades, John Choma has served his community through his dedication to sports, youth, his commitment to his family and friends, and his loyalty to the community members. Thank you, John. So on behalf of the Frackle Borough, we'd like to present you this plaque. Uh, and everybody again, John Schumann, what a great man. wanted to present me with a plaque, so they wanted to have a little get together at the Elks. <laughs> and present me with this plaque for being a coach in Frackville for 50 years. And of course I told her no. <laughs> and she said, oh, come on, it's not gonna take long. It's just a little get together. And I thought, well, maybe some other people are getting awards also. So anyway, I agreed. And here we are, a little get together. <laughs> I'd like to start with, what do I say? I just have to thank everyone. I want to thank Wendy and the mayor and president council for putting this together and for giving me this award and plaque. I'd like to thank all this speakers that came up tonight and all your kind words we really appreciate it it's an honor it's a pleasure and i never expected anything like this i'm grateful for my family and all of you my best friends that took the time to be here today I see out there there's people that I played Little League with 60 years ago that are here. And there's, I think there's at least four or five. I, I appreciate it. And I see players that played this year all the way to, I think the one, one told me today, 50 years ago we played. And he's here tonight. And I appreciate all of you for taking the time out to be here tonight. Timmy, we played on the same little league game. <laughs> Julia Rogers, I see him here. But anyway, Paul Dean, I think you were one of the first ones I coached on little on seniors, you and your father. I appreciate you all coming here tonight. During the past 50 years, I was blessed to coach, with, to be with some great coaches that are here tonight. And for me to work with some terrific managers, smart managers, and work with real good coaches. They're here tonight, I thank you. I was always proud when I went to a, a high school baseball game and I'd see seven or eight or sometimes even nine people that started and they all come out of the practical teenerly. That's what really made me feel good. And 
boys that I coach, I was proud of them because a lot of them went on to college and they're very successful in what they do. A lot of them went on to play college baseball, football and basketball, and Division Three, Division Two, Division One players. Proud of them. They all went through our program. And even two goes on to the major leagues with Reggie and Joe. Especially proud of them because how many coaches in their life could say that they coached somebody that actually went on to the major leagues or went on to play at Lafayette or I see we have our starting fullback from Penn State here today. He went through the Tiener program. It's just so rewarding. And I'll never forget the guys that coached that went into the military. Really proud of all of them. And my main goal over all these 50 years was the Frackville boys and the North Schuylkill boys to be competitive, be respectful, have good character, and learning the value of being a good sport. I care about Frackville and I care about the communities around Frackville. And I care about each and every player that ever played senior baseball or little league or region for me. This chapter of my life is, is a blessing to me. And truthfully, I got more out of this than the players got from me. And I'll end by telling everyone here tonight, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And God bless all of you. ceremony but you're welcome to uh, you know have conversations with John and his family about all your memories and uh, eat, more, eat more food uh, but in, enjoy the day this is all about John so enjoy the day thank you actually I would like to thank everybody too for their help with cooking food the Rogers family the elves um, Boyers donated New Brayford donated the hot dogs so everybody that contributes to this I really appreciate it thank you Thank you.